Well, Michael Levin, who I know personally, is, you know, I, I think one of the best biologists working today. And he's very into the idea of fields, or morphogenetic fields, top-down causation in biology. Molecular biology is about bottom-up causation, lots of molecules interacting and somehow higher levels of order emerge. Well, what Michael Levin and I both agree about is you have to have top-down uh, information, uh, patterns of information. And electric fields, all fields, are basically top-down causes. You know, magnetic field arranging the with iron filings around a magnet and the lines of force, you've got a top-down cause. The, 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 the field as a whole sets the pattern. The gravitational field keeping the moon in its orbit and attracting meteorites to the Earth is a top-down cause. You, you, when you're calculating the gravitational field, you don't take into account every atom inside the Earth and work out their little attraction to each other. And then you, you, you take the whole Earth as a whole and it's a top-down cause, the gravitational field. So he and I agree about that. Um, I think what we also agree about is that morphogenetic fields work through electromagnetic fields. Uh, so I would say that the electromagnetic field he's measuring in his frog embryos, um, yes, indeed, this is a field that's helping to shape the development. But what shapes the electromagnetic field? You see, the normal study of electromagnetism is that electromagnetism arises from the way matters already arranged, the way in which you've got cell membranes producing electrical uh, potentials across them and so on. So what shapes that electromagnetic field? It can't be electromagnetism itself, which is, as it were, passively responding to what's already there, that's already the already distri distributed electric charges and so forth. So I think that it's shaped by the morphogenetic field. I think they work through electromagnetic fields. I think morphic fields work on our behavior and our activities through working through the electromagnetic fields in our brains, which shape brain activity. You know, the electro, there's waves all the time in our brains, all sorts of electromagnetic patterns. So I think the electromagnetic fields, I think, are the interface, but not the explanation. And Michael Levin's also done work that I think points towards morphic resonance effects. And Fruit, as you'll probably know, his, fruit, his uh, flatworm experiments, where he trains them to learn a new trick. Then he cuts off their head, which contains what little brain they have. And then the flatworms regenerate. They regenerate a new head and a new brain, and they can remember what they learned before. Now, I would expect that on the basis of morphic resonance. They tune into their own past by morphic resonance. Uh, well, Michael Levin... Um, can't say that. You know, he's interested in morphic resonance. I mean, I, he read my book, A New Science of Life, years ago. I mean, he, he's very familiar with my work. Um, he doesn't mention it in public because, you know, I'm dangerous to know on the whole.